Well, praise the Lord. How many likes one Wednesday when all the, all the kids is in here and, and, I don't know, they just bring something to the table. You know, I love it, the energy that they have. Uh, Melissa leaned over to me and, and she said, listen at them, you know, the, the harmony that was going on, the pureness in the, in the, uh, of the worship that they were releasing. And I just thought, oh, my goodness, you know, we... We're bad about saying, well, you know, the next generation's coming. Elbow your neighbor and say they're here. They're here. And, and not only are they here, but they're well able. They are well able. We have, uh, we have uh, seen the Lord raise them up, even at a very tender and early age. Well, how many brought your Bible with you tonight? Hallelujah. Hold it up and let me see it. I, you know, I, I got tickled at myself this past, last week. Um, it was one of them weeks that the devil was trying to have his way, and every computer we had on this campus went down. I'm telling you, it was just a mess. And uh, I was trying to get my computer back up, and it wouldn't come back up, and we had Steve get on it remotely and try to fix it and whatnot, and I finally I told Melissa, I said, never mind. I said, I'll just use Paw Paw. <laughs> I, I, how, many, how many is glad that all the electricity can go out and you still know what to do? You still have a word that you can read. You still have something that you can go with. I decided, I told us, I don't need a computer. Hmm. Jesus preached to 20,000. and He didn't have a sound system or nothing. No iPad. I don't know how he did it. He must think he's God or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, let's get started tonight. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best to, to not preach tonight. Uh, and try to teach a little bit if I can. Y'all know how that goes with me. I'll get lathered up and get going, and, but I'm going to try not to. I'm going to try to, to do a little thing because I have a number of things that as I was writing this that I, I feel like is significant. I, I feel like that it has some, some substance to it, and, and I want to try to relate that to you tonight. So is it all right if I pray for myself and pray for you? So gracious Lord, Wow, we just say thank you already for the presence that we have, that we feel in this place, Lord. When you come in this room, I, I just love it when you come in the room. You feel the place, and you are worthy of it all. Well, Lord, for the next little while, I pray that you'll give me the ability to communicate, that you'll give me the ability to hear your voice, and to be able to relate it to the precious people that's sitting in front of me, and those that are watching online, Father, I pray that the Spirit of God would just reach every one that this Word can reach. We thank you for the presence. We thank you for the power. And all the glory is yours. In Jesus' name, everybody said with me, amen. So last week, uh, we started talking about Ephesians chapter 6 just briefly because I wanted to get down to one particular subject that was mentioned in the whole armor of God, and that was the shield of faith. Uh, I know that all the other armor has its place. I know that it's been specifically designed for our good and to protect us. I understand the, the uh, authority that's released in the armor of God against the, the scripture says, against the, the schemes, the wiles of the devil. Make no mistake about it that uh, he is scheming against the children of God. He is definitely out against God's kingdom. And so uh, as we acknowledge that, um, we, we, used to, uh, we used to say this, we, we acknowledge it, but we don't have to be afraid of it. You know, we don't have to. Uh, yield to it. We don't have to succumb to it because God has given us the ability to overcome. So in Ephesians chapter 6, one of the things he said, he said that he was going to give us to the uh, ability to stand against the schemes and the wiles of the devil. And just, just to, to say, to make a stand means to hold a critical position during the attack. There's another scripture in the Old Testament where uh, they were, uh, David was taking a glance at the army that he had. And he was naming the different divisions of the army. And he got to one part of the army and this is what he said about them. 
He said they could keep rank and maintain battle formation. Y'all have heard me say this before. Anybody can march on a parade ground. Any soldier can march on the parade ground. They can take a lift, a lift, and they can make it all happen. They can do their, uh, everything they're supposed to do while they're in, on, in a controlled environment. But you let the firefight start, and it takes a special uh, trained individual to maintain his rank and maintain a battle formation. And that's what Christians are supposed to do. Most of the time, whenever the enemy comes out against us, if we're not careful, first thing we do be calling pastor. When that's all right, we'll fight with you. We'll help you as much as we can. But you've got to come to the place that if pastor's not there, you know what to do. You know how to fight. You know what to fight with. You know, you know when to fight. You know when you need some help. And so we're just going to talk about that, but we want to talk about making that stand. That means that we are going to, uh, we're going to take a strategic position during the attack and stand there and use the battle, use the, the armor of God during the battle. So we got down to the last thing and we said this, we have truth, we have the church, we have His Word, we have grace, we're saved, we have salvation, we have so much more. But the one I want to focus on tonight is we have been given the measure of faith. Uh, I want to talk about just for a little while tonight and see if we can have uh, some conversation about it. Life of faith through the spirit of faith. We're not careful, we'll have faith in faith. We'll have, try to have faith because we've been taught that's what we do. When we're trying to do what we're taught, but yet there's really no active faith coming up out of our spirit, we're going to end up in trouble. So we're going to talk about life of faith. How many knows that it's one thing to be in God when trouble shows up, and it's another thing when trouble shows up that you've got to try to find God. And we see it all the time. We, we watch people go through crisis in life, and whenever the crisis hits, you'll see them in church. They'll be over there with their hands raised, and you can't blow them out of here with a stick of dynamite. And then whenever the crisis lets up and the crisis is over, then you start, well, where are they at? I don't see them. I haven't seen them in a little while. It's because we're not living in a life of faith. We're living in a crisis faith. How many of y'all ever watched somebody? Maybe you've done it yourself. When crisis comes, your faith, you summons your faith. Well, I, I want us to come from that summonsing our faith when crisis hits to already be in faith when the crisis hits. It's a totally different thing. You, you respond and you don't react. And whenever you begin to respond in faith, that's when God's heart is moved. God's hand is not moved by need. God's hand is not moved by praise. But God's heart is moved by faith. And when we move God's heart by faith, then we get his hand. If we can find God in faith, we'll find God in purpose, in, in strength, in deed. So let's see if we can move along with it. Take your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 11. The book of Mark chapter 11, and we're going to start at verse 22. Now notice the simplicity of the conversation that Jesus has with his disciples. He looks at them and simply says, Jesus answer and saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whatsoever you shall say unto this mountain, now I don't want to preach at all of this, but notice the little terms that's used, this mountain. 
That tells me that we're going to face more than one mountain. That tells me that there's more than one mountain. But when you find yourself in this place, when you find it and you're facing this mountain, how many of y'all faced a mountain before? But how many of you can look at me and say, Pastor, I'm facing this mountain now. It's this mountain that I'm concerned about. He said, You shall say unto this mountain... Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and it shall and shall not doubt in his heart. Now listen to this, the criteria. It said, But shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. Now look at look at what he says after that. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now I don't mind telling y'all that I hang up there. Because I've been places many times that I've believed for something. Or at least I was moving that direction. And I didn't see what I wanted. I didn't see what I felt like needed to happen. Now I'm fixing to shake us a little bit. And then we start making excuses for him. And we say things like, well I guess it wasn't his will. Well, maybe next time. But if we build our theology on maybe next time, or if we build our theology based on, well, I messed up yesterday, and so he must not going to be answering my prayer because I failed yesterday. Then we're going to build on a faulty foundation, and we'll have no reason to believe that we can have what we need of. In the book of James, the Scripture says that an unstable man is... is uh, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And it goes on to say, and he need not think that he's going to receive anything from God. So there is a, there is a, a, a method to this madness of believing. And as quick as we can learn something about the method, then we will have the power and the right to start believing for whatever we say. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I think that sounds a lot like heaven to me because without, without, and I need to check you here, how many of you could, could think of five different things right now that you would ask God to do and none of it have anything to do with you? I think I could ask God for a few things that has nothing to do with me. But it might have something to do with you. It may have something to do with your family. It may have something to do with the will of God being released in your life so that you can get on with the, the destiny part of your life, move towards the very reason that you're here. And so this is a powerful concept when he says that if we could believe and, and not doubt that what things soever you desire, you pray, believe, ye receive them, and ye shall have them. I have trouble with the King James, I'm telling you. And when ye stand praying, forgive it if ye have aught against any. Everybody get your pencil out and scribble that out right there. How many would like to have the, to, the ability to scribble some stuff out? Well, we're laughing about it, but that's what we do sometimes. We just don't have a pen. Sometimes we look at that and you say, well, I think I know what he meant. But I go like this, but I'm special. That don't, that don't, that's not talking about me. Come on, y'all. I'm just simply saying, watch this. There's some things that are blatantly there that if we could get to that point, we might get to the other point of saying what we will, and it happened. Oh, you didn't have to say that, Brother West. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? We, we like the part where it says that you could say what you want and believe that you could have whatever you say. 
But then we get down just a couple of lines more and said, but if there's somebody you got a problem with, you got to go fix that problem first and then. Now watch this. Pride is a horrible thing. Some of us will just decide, I'll just stay in my pride and do without whatever it is I'm praying for. Oh, I'm, y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm the champ at that. I'm not, I'm not pointing at you. I'm telling you, I know how to do this. See, when I don't give y'all, when I, when I throw myself out there like that, y'all got nowhere to hide. So can I read it again? And when you stand, if y'all don't mind, I'm going to change the ye to you because it just messes me up. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have all against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you of your trade. Oh, wait a minute. You mean that if I don't forgive, I can't be forgiven? We need to walk away from that, ask what you will and you can have it. We need to figure out what we're doing with this right here. You see, if we get this right here, we can get this over there. But I think sometimes we, we, we do what I said a while ago. We just play like it's not there or play like it doesn't affect me or come to me. And How many, how many of y'all, y'all ready? Look at your neighbor and ask them, are they ready? Everybody that can think of at least one person that you need to go to tonight, raise your hand. Pants on fire. How many of y'all know what the rest of that is? So y'all telling me that y'all like this with everybody. Don't make me pull my coat off. I like the way people look at you. Whenever you say stuff like that, they go. And they're thinking to themselves, just hang on, he's going to get off of that in a minute. (laughs) Uh. I want to stir us up a little bit. Every person has the capacity of faith. Faith is the ability to believe in something that you can't see. We've been given this measure by God because Roman Paul Romans 12.3 12.3 says, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So we've been given this faith, and faith is not something that you can work up. Faith is not something that you have to get worked up. Sometimes we think if we get loud and fast that that's the evidence of faith moving. Sometimes we think that, you know, it takes some special um, little... Uh, 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 what, what, what can I say? You know, little formula, if you will. Do this, this, and this, and you'll get and play the right music, and your faith will come alive. Now, don't get me wrong. We can we can set the tone that's conducive for the spirit of faith to be activated, but. We're going to talk about what really takes place in just a minute. Faith is not something we have to get worked up. Faith is something, I want everybody to hear this, faith is what God Himself has put in you. You can be around other people with faith and your faith be triggered, if you will, or if you see something, a miracle, or you see something like that, your faith can... can Get a shot of a boost of energy. How many's ever been in a situation to where you prayed for something, saw the release of it, and your faith was built? Your faith was established. So God has put into every heart, into every man, the measure of faith. So somebody look at somebody and say, and that's enough. 
God wouldn't give you just a little bit and, and hope you can work up the rest. But He gives you what you need, the measure of faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, we need to get this in our understanding. That it is impossible to please God without faith. You can do every formula that you can find. You can go to every faith meeting that you can get to. You know, back in the day, you know, go to Benny Hinn's meetings and stuff like that. And even further back, the different ones that God used to release miracles of faith. You know, but unless you release your faith. Now, there is a place for gathering other people's faith. Y'all remember the man that, that was let down through the roof? Jesus himself testified of it. He looked up at them and this is what he said. He said, and when he saw their faith. So you can't count your faith out being valuable to somebody else that can't do for themselves. How many has ever been in a place that you couldn't pray for yourself? Pants on fire. How many's ever been to a place that you just didn't feel like you had the power to pray for yourself? That's when you call, Pastor. That's when you call the, the prayer warriors of the church. That's when you call for the elders. And the Bible gives us scripture to call for the elders and they'll pray a prayer of faith. Lay hands on the sick and what? They shall recover. So yeah, you know, there's levels that we can operate in our faith, but I want to summons that faith that you possess. Hmm. Having said what I just said about sometimes not having the power to pray for yourself, how many knows it's important for us to stay in a position that we can pray for somebody? I'm not just saying this, church, but my family might need me. My family might need me walking in the power of a clear conscience so that I can speak the Word of God, so that I can believe the Word of God in faith for them. There's many a man and woman that's alive and in church today because their grandma would get on their face and pray for them. Their grandfather would be down on their face praying for them, calling their name out, their pastor. I'm just telling you, y'all, there's a place for faith within us all, and God's given us that measure of faith. God's given every person the capacity to believe. God does not make us believe, but He gave us the ability to believe. Fixing to make a crazy old statement. But you could offer me $10 million from my faith and I'd have to tell you to keep your money. Because if I've got faith and properly aligned faith, I can have $10 million if I need it. But we've got to operate in faith. Young people, y'all listen to me. The quicker you learn how to be moved in your faith, the quicker you're going to find an establishment of godly power in your life that's going to be evident when it comes time to make decisions for your life. If we make, us, if we make a decision based on intellect, make a decision based on what TikTok says, Make a decision based on, on what, the, what, what this, some of this generation is, is believing. We've got to move back. Forgive me for saying it. Back to Paul Paul. Back to the Word of God. Back to the thing that won't move. Back to that thing that we anchor out in. And it's called faith. Melissa, if you'd come, please. Now watch this. God wants a people that will respond by faith. We can either react in fear or respond in faith. God wants to put a response of faith 
in each of us. God wants us to exercise our faith. God wants people who will choose to believe Him with the measure of faith that He's given us. I don't know what you're facing tonight. I don't know what you've been facing for the last decade. But I can tell you this. If you're still here tonight, still with the the Word of God in your heart, still with the desire to serve and please Him, then you're walking in some level of the measure of faith that He's given to you. I don't ever want to lose that measure of faith. I don't ever want to to, uh, succumb to fear because of what a doctor's report says. Abraham was known as the father of faith. Where's Noah? How come they never talked about Noah's faith? Because Noah wasn't a man of faith. Faith didn't start till Moses, I mean Abraham, started to walk in a direction that he did not even know where he was going. One thing led to another and he finally had the promised son. And then God told him, I need you to take the biggest step of faith that you've ever taken in your life. I want you to take your son and offer him to me. Give him back to me. Take the wood. Take take, take your son. Y'all go up to the place of sacrifice. Then he finally finds himself standing in an awkward place like this with a knife in his hand. Would y'all try to put yourself in his place just for a moment? How desperate his heart must have been crying for God to do something. God, are you sure this is what you want me to do? You see, there's going to be a a question answered in your life at some time. Y'all listen to you, Pastor. There's going to come a day. That you're going to have a question in front of you. And some of you know that, that's older know this. And maybe you're there right now. But there's going to come a day in our life of faith that God's going to require of us something that's not going to feel right. Or something that's going to feel like that's too much. Or I don't know if I can do that or not. So here's the father of faith. I don't think he was known as the father of faith until after this incident because God said something that made made this come to life. When he's standing there with the knife raised, getting ready to slay and offer his son as a sacrifice to the God he loved. The voice of faith gave way to the word of faith. When he said, Abraham, Abraham, don't take his life. The ram caught in the bush became the sacrifice. I wish I had an hour to preach about that. Jesus became our sacrifice. His father stood with the knife drawn. But so we would know that He is God. And we would know that Jesus was willing. He gave His Son as the sacrifice for you and me. I can't think about that without something welling up inside of me. Realizing that it could have been me, but God gave His Son. And then He validated Abraham. He looked at Abraham and said, don't don't take his life. Here's the sacrifice I've provided for you. And then He made a statement to Abraham. He said, now I know.
How many wants to hear God say that about you? But God, I can't give that up. But God says, if you're going to follow me, I'm going to need you to give that up. I'm going to need you to sacrifice that. Because I have a plan for you, Abraham. My plan is that you have children that are more than the sea, the sand on the sea is numbered. Do y'all realize that Israel is still here today? In spite of everything that's gone on, they're still here because they're the promise. And that faith that I'm talking about tonight is moved towards them. But his faith that he's placed in you is moved towards him. This is how I'd like to end this part. I'm going to pick this back up, the Lord willing, next Wednesday. I want you, if you're in this room tonight, you're believing for something. You haven't seen it yet. Make a bold statement. Come and stand in front of me right now. Just come and line up right here. That you, that you are praying for something and you have not seen it yet. And the devil has told you that your faith isn't strong. Is there anybody in here that the devil's ever told you that you don't have strong faith? The Bible don't say have faith in Pastor West. The Bible don't say have faith in the worship team and the awesome job they did tonight. We started this scripture out tonight because God, the, the, the writer, Matthew, said, Jesus said, have faith in God. There's a lady standing right there that six months ago the doctor told her she couldn't live. Call the family in. Get them all in here because you're not going to be here much longer. She had about five different things that, was, that one of them should have killed her. But look at her right there. Standing there with a smile on her face with her hand on her sister praying for her. You say, well, Pastor, what's your point? The point is, is that the doctors had done all they could do. And she had poison in her body and just, just all kinds of stuff. But many of you prayed for her. I know Brother Roger went and prayed for her. I know Melissa and myself went and prayed for her. Her sister wouldn't let go. There was a number of people in this church that refused to let go. And there she stands. How many needs a miracle in this room tonight? Have faith in God. How many of you have a family member that needs a miracle tonight? The doctors are telling them this isn't going to turn out good. I'm telling you, I feel faith stirring. Come on, I feel faith stirring. I want you to release your faith. You say, well, pastor, I don't know if I have faith. Yes, you do. I just read it to you. The scripture said he's given us the measure of faith. So stir your faith. 
Timothy, Paul told Timothy to stir up that gift. I want you to begin to stir your faith right now. Come on, let me hear you. Stir that faith up right now. Activate that faith. You say, well, where does faith come from? The Lord be my help next Wednesday night. I'm going to come back from the camp and uh, where the youth camp is, and I'm going to preach this part of this message. The Bible said that faith comes by hearing. If you want to activate faith, you got to read this word. If you want your faith to come alive, you got to know what God said about it. You can pray your wish, you can pray your desire, but when you begin to pray this word by faith, it's got to move the hand of God. I want to stir your faith tonight. I want to stir your thinking tonight. I want your thinking to begin to turn into faith because of what the word says. But pastor, I've been praying for years. Keep on praying, baby. Keep on praying. Look at somebody in their eyes and say, don't quit praying. Keep on praying. I serve a God who's able. The scripture said that he will do more, that he's able to do more than we could ask or even think. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let faith answer the door. You say, but pastor, I don't know what to do. Let your faith answer the door. Nobody likes to hear a doctor tell them, that this is this and this is that and there's no hope. I'm here to tell you, as long as there's a God, there's hope. Watch this. Watch this. Me and Daryl were laughing about this yesterday. A woman in Arizona died, pronounced her dead, took her to the mortuary, Put her on the table, getting ready to start. And she, the, the mortician realized she was breathing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if that would have been back in the 1800s where they didn't have equipment and all that, they'd have buried her. But in the face of technology, in the face of the best machines that they checked, for vital life before they pronounce dead. She made it all the way to the mortuary. Say, don't count God out. See, I'm not trying to be funny here. I'm just saying, he thinks he's God. And he can do what he wants. But his heart and hands are moved not by need, not by desire, not by wishing, but his heart and hands moved by faith. So I want you to, I want you before we turn loose, it's only 8.03, before we turn loose, I want you to, I want you to lay hold of your faith. I want you to get in contact with your faith. Come on. Get in contact with your faith. Speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. And let faith arise in your soul. Let faith arise in your mind, in your heart, in your will. Let your emotions get involved with your faith.
If you don't know how to pray about something, the book tells us in the book of Romans that he knows how to pray. He knows how to pray. So here we go. I don't, I, I know that we can't get out of control. Paul kind of handled that. But if you know how to pray in the Holy Ghost, I want you to begin to release it right now. Go ahead, release your prayer language. Release your heavenly language right now. Begin to set ambushment against the devil. Lay hold of your faith. Let the Spirit of God pray. Yes, Lord, let your Spirit pray in us. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let your faith be strengthened. Let your faith be strengthened. Nothing is impossible with God. If God can bring a woman back to life and she's laying in the mortuary, He can do whatever it is you need. Y'all, that happened yesterday. Well, Brother Wes, I heard about stuff happening years ago. He's doing it now. We're living in a now time of faith. So Revival Temple, release your faith. Release your faith. Y'all pray. Y'all pray. Y'all pray. Y'all pray that God will speak to my heart concerning this. I may go back to it Sunday morning and see what God wants to do. But we need His direction. We need His, 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 His push. The unction. Till we see God fall in this place yes, Lord. in ways that we've yet to see it. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, 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 amen. amen.